Hello everyone, my name is Latrell Freeman. I'm the lead function tester for the ZOSMF Configuration Assistant. Today what I want to do is take you through um, a high level overview of how to create an interface and a port statement using the new TCP IP perspective in the V2R2 Configuration Assistant. So um, when we first um, open the Configuration Assistant, you'll see that we have the ability to select the back and store. I have a previously created back and store already. It's a blank back and store, but it was recently created and it's fairly empty. So um, what I would do, I would select my back and store demo one and click open. So being that this is a new back and store, by default, it takes us to the IPsec perspective. In the configuration system, we have multiple technologies you could configure. But for this demo, um, what I would like to do is take you through the TCP IP profile. So I will select TCP IP profile. So just to describe some of the things in this panel, one, you'll see we have the systems tab. And this tab is where we will configure our LPARs and our stacks that we would like to configure. Uh, we also have tabs for reusable configuration and security on reusable resources. But for the sake of this demo, I will not go into that configuration. In the systems tab, you will see that we have this default group. Under this group is where you would configure your, your LPARs and your stacks. You also have the ability to create sysplexes. That's why we have the default group. And then if you create a sysplex group, you have a sysplex group. But for this demo, what I would like to do is just create an LPAR and a stack and show you how that configuration um, creates a TCP IP profile. So what I would do here is select my default systems group, click the actions button, and create add ZOS system image. And this panel is where I, where I would configure my LPAR. So here I would give it a name. I can call it LPAR1. We have the option of changing the release back to N minus two releases. So we have V2R2, V2R1, and V1R13. One thing that I would like to mention for the TCP IP configuration, this was developed in V2R2. So if you wanted to configure any TCP IP stack profiles, your image has to be at the V2R2 release. So I will leave it at V2R2 and click OK. Here it asks us if I want to proceed to create a new stack. So I can click proceed here and it opens up our add TCP IP stack panel. In this panel, I can create a stack. I can call it TCP IP1. I have the option of giving it a description, but I will just go ahead and click OK. And after we create our stack, and now it gives us the pop-up to ask us do we want to configure our stack. So when I click proceed, this is where it takes us into our configuration panel. Now, one thing I want to do, I did want to take you through the manual way of going into this panel before I start configuring my stack. If I didn't click proceed, what I would have had to do is select my stack, which is an incomplete status right now, and select actions, configure. And this takes us to the same panel. So in this panel, this shows everything that I configure in my TCP IP stack. We have interfaces, routes, ports, security statements, some source IP addressing statements, and we have other configurations such as performance and protocol and some management and traces. For this demo, the only two things that I would like to configure are two interfaces, one for a Viper interface and one to configure our, our OSA interface. And then I would like to create one port and then show you what our configuration actually created in the flat file. So what I would like to do here is click on the interface resource. It gives us a blank table. Um, as we start to configure different interfaces, this table will start to populate and list all of the interfaces that we have configured for this specific stack. So to start my configuration, what I can do is select Actions, New. And this takes us to a wizard, which walks us step by step with how to configure each individual interface. So here you can see I give it a name, a description. It gives us all the different types of interfaces we can configure and the different IP address types, IPv4 and IPv6. So for the first interface, what I would like to do is create a simple static Viper. I can call this Viper 1. Here's where I would select my type of interface. So I want to create a static virtual IP address. Click Next. And for a virtual IP address, the only thing that you have to configure is an IPv4 address. So here I can just give it 1.2.3.4 just to keep it simple and click Finish. So now we have a static Viper configured for uh, TC stack TCP IP1. And if you ever wondered what stack and image you're in, you can just look up at the top of the breadcrumbs. It shows that you're in the TCP IP profile. It shows that you're in the default group, LPAR1, stack TCP IP1. So this is the Viper address for stack TCP IP1. 
So now if I wanted to go in and create another interface, let's say if I want to create an interface for my OSA, I can select action new again, call this OSA1. I keep this as an Ethernet LAN, this OSD type, IPv4, click next. And here on this connectivity panel, you see we have a lot more options than we had in a static virtual IP address. So here I have to give it a IPv4 address. I can call it 5.5.5.5. .5 .5 .5. Give it a subnet prefix length of 8. I have to give it a port name for the TRLE definition. So I can just say TRLE P1. Have the option of giving it a VLAN ID. You can see this is optional because um, one thing that I forgot to mention is if you see that in a field has an asterisk beside it, this indicates that this field is required. If I were to try to click next on any of these fields without it being filled in, it would give me a warning that said this value is acquired with the X um, to the right of the panel. So I give it a TRLE definition. I will leave my VLAN unchecked. And the reason I configured my Viper interface, because now that I'm creating the OSA interface, I have also have the option of giving it a, a source Viper interface to use as the source for this interface. So when being that I've already created a virtual IP address, in this drop down, it will populate with all the virtual IP addresses I have configured for this specific stack. So now if I select Viper 1, I now have that as my source Viper interface. I can click next. Here's where I have my additional properties. I can go in and create, um, um, configure any additional settings. If I don't go in there, I get all, I'll receive all the default settings um, that we have configured for this interface. So I can click finish here. And now we have two interfaces configured for stack TCP IP 1 our virtual IP address, and our OSA interface. So when I click close, you can see now that our interface status went from not configured to configured. Whenever anything shows configured, this actually tells me that I actually have a TCP IP profile that I can actually install. So before I leave this panel, the other thing I want to do is just create a simple port in the ports panel. So here it gives me all of the available ports that I can configure for TCP, for TCP and UDP. 1 through 65, 535 for each. I can just select this range, select Actions, New, Reserve a Port, Port Range. Um, in this panel, it pre-populates with my available ports. I had 1 through 65, 535. Or I can just select Port Number and give it a simple port. Let's say if I give it Port 80 for TCP, give it a job name of HTTP, and click OK. So here you can see our panel kind of rearranged. It shows that we now have 1 through 79 available. We have port 80 reserved with job name HTTP. And then we have 81 through 65, 535 available. So when I click close here, you'll see now that we have two resources configured. We have our interface resource and our ports resource configured. So now that I have configuration, I would like to show you exactly what we configured in this stack so far. So when I select this stack, what I would do is select actions, install configuration files. Here it shows the um, a, a list of all the configuration files that I have to install. I select one specific stack, so it's just going to give me the list of that stack, the stack configuration file that I have to display. So I select this stack, I can select actions, show configuration file, and this shows the exact configuration that we configured in our stack. This shows the interface for the virtual IP address that we configured. It shows our OSA interface that we configured with chip it ID type OSD. You can also see below that we have some of the default um, advanced settings that were configured um, in our advanced settings panel. You can see that we chose to start this OSA um, interface. And here's the port that we configured for HTTP. So now that we actually have a, a TCP IP profile to install, what I would like to do is an actions install. So now that we're in the install panel, you can see by default it gives us a data set that we would like to save our TCP IP profile. So by default it gives us user1.tcppalms in the name of the stack that we configured in our systems panel. You have the option of modifying this to whatever you like. You have the option of saving it to disk or FTP. Saving it to disk saves it locally to whatever uh, machine that ZOSMF is running on currently. If you want to send this TCP IP profile somewhere else, you can choose the FTP option. And here you will figure you um, configure all of the required fields below. 
So you can see we have an asterisk beside host name, port name, user ID, and password. This means that all of these fields are required in order to perform an FTP. So after you fill out these configurations, you have the option of choosing whether to use SSL and to add a comment to this configuration file. From here, all you have to do is click go, and then you're done. Your configuration file is now on the machine that you chose to FTP. So that sums up our demo for our TCP IP profile configuration. Thanks for watching this video.